Hello, everybody. We're going to go ahead and show you the new anisotropic uh, option that you can see within the viewer, both in the OpenGL and the uh, iRay, inside of Substance Painter uh, 3.0. It just came out. I just downloaded it. So really cool uh, stuff here. It, it has support for sparse virtual texturing, or SVT, which allows for fast feedback through the optimization of your textures. Um, and it also has some export options as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I went ahead and opened up Meet Matt, so you can get that by hitting Open Samples and saying, uh, just get to Meet Matt here and gives you the option to open up that uh, little guy. And I'm gonna hide the body and the base so I can just see the head itself. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop some material in here just for a quick example, some kind of a shiny material, like I'll use Copper Pure. So I'll go to my layers here, uh, put that into Copper Pure. I'll get rid of this layers, and it has no purpose. And if you take a look at it by default, you know, the, you can see the reflections in the scene are, you know, if there's a light in the scene, it's perfectly spherical. So we're going to talk about anisotropic and how to add that. So the first thing we do is to actually add the material. So I'm going to click here under the texture set list and say New Shader Instance. And now if I click the little ball here, I'm going to change this out and choose the PBR metallic rough anisotropic angle. This is a new material, looks like a golden coin. And with that allowed, you can see now under texture sets, uh, we've had this before, but they don't never work. Uh, you'll see anisotropic angle and anisotropic level. So I'm gonna uh, make sure I get both those channels, so angle and anisotropic level. You need both of these guys. All right, so with that said, I'm gonna make another base material here, so, or I should say fill layer put it on top, and I'm only going to export out uh, the information for angle and level, as you can see. So if I have the uh, level set to black, and I start playing with the anisotropic angle, you can see nothing is happening. See that? As I increase it from a value of 0 to a value of 1, the anisotropic level has to be up. So as I start to increase the anisotropic level, you can see that it's biased towards uh, up or down or left and right. You can see, kind of like, you know, just taking a look at it here. So the angle, you guessed it, has to do with the angle. So if I rotate it, you can see now we're getting a rotation here and here and here. So this is really, really cool. Uh, and again, when you're dealing with things such as like, uh, you know, vinyl records and stuff like that, that's the anisotropic effect type of spiel. Uh, but this allows you uh, for specific metals, and you've seen this maybe if you've seen brushed metal up against buildings and so forth. If you want to have that kind of straight up and down streaky effect, you can. And you can see if you kind of take a look at it. It's really great. Now, does this stuff show up in iRay? We're going to go ahead and iRay really quick and see what we get. And yes, we do see that in iRay, we get the effect. So um, if you go ahead and take a look under the shader settings here, uh, we do have a whole bunch of other options here, but pretty much, you know, the index of refraction won't really play too much with that or any of these. So there's really no option in regards to the anisotropic at the level of the shader inside of iRay. So all that is sort of uh, established here in here. So you can paint uh, different areas of different levels, obviously. So let's jump back out really quick. And obviously you can paint a value from zero to one, right? So if I come over here and let's see here. So let's just say we add a mask to this. We'll add a black mask. Or actually, you know what, let's add, yeah, let's add a black mask. And with that mask, let's add a fill. And within that fill, we'll choose a procedural. And we'll just use a checkerboard for the procedural just to see what we get. And I will scale up the checkerboard. So you can see for this right here, uh, what we're dealing with is a difference between the original and the version that's actually stretched. So you can see this little highlight here like that. So that's one thing we could do. Uh, the other thing I could do is I'll just go ahead and uh, delete this mask here. So remove mask. And I can go ahead and change the angle of this by painting a different angle from the one below. So for instance, if I just come in here and I will delete out this material here. And let's go ahead and just create a layer. So just a simple layer. In this case, I'm going to just simply paint uh, the angle and the level. So the the angle itself, remember the level, if we come back to the copper level here, let's export the level and we want the level to be increased. So we actually want anisotropic. There we go. And now we can paint the angle with the layer itself. So just by painting the uh, angle, you could see that I have a, the values between 0 to 1. So I can come in here and brush this up 
and choose a value that is at one. So you could see if I take a look at this, am I, I'm not painting height, am I? Yeah. So you're getting quite an interesting look. It almost looks like height information. I'm not painting any height information. Uh, so you could see, and then I could also see if I can. Yeah. So it's giving you, like I said, it's almost like a, it's almost like lines of a CD or something. I don't know what the what to make of it, but yeah, it's just interesting. So go ahead and play with it. And uh, again, really cool um, extra that Substance Painter is implementing. Uh, again, they just did uh, you know subsurface scattering. Now they're moving on to anisotropy. Um, lots of cool options in here. I'm kind of thinking about the future on here. Like there's a whole bunch of here, like transmissive and all this fun stuff. So I'm looking forward to see what they have coming down the pipe.